ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله it was in the middle of the night a man came out of his room and he went to the living room he left his warm bed he left his wife and he went to the living room and he turned on the tv afterwards he put on he put in a cassette tape or a video a video cassette tape and he was sitting down to watch pornography at this moment his daughter who was 5 years old came out of her room and she saw her father watching what he was watching and she said shame on you father shame on you and she turned around and returned to her room the brother looked for the remote tried to turn off his tv in time but he was too late in the words shame on you father shame on you kept on repeating over and over and over again and again in his head that morning this was in the morning i mean this is the time when the believers get up to play to pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tahajjud and he was watching pornography because of the words of his son, his daughter he went and he took a shower and he went to the masjid and tears were coming down his eyes the whole time when prayer started he started crying profusely after prayer he continued crying tears were coming down his eyes he was crying so much that the brothers around him who attended fajr they thought maybe a great calamity had befallen upon this brother so all of them asked when they went by him brother is there anything i can do for you is there something wrong is there anything i can help you with so he just shook his head that day he went to work and his eyes were red from the crying from what had happened last night and his coworker asked him he said to him brother is there something wrong so he told him he said brother for almost 40 years i haven't made sujood to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until this morning i haven't made sujood to allah willingly until this morning 
So he was remorseful for all those years that had passed. So he came back home. He found his wife crying. From work, after coming back from work, he found his wife crying. And he said, what's wrong? In his mind, he was thinking maybe his daughter had said something to her. And so he said, what's wrong? She said, do you know that our daughter just passed away? And so they prepared the janazah. And when it was time to bury his daughter, he was the one that was in the grave. He was about to put her inside the lahad, the side, in the, in the grave, put her in the grave. And a smile came to his face. A smile came to his face. So his friends who were there, they said, you know, you've been crying all this time. Why is it when at the time when you put your daughter in the grave, the smile has come on, on your face? Why do we see a smile on your face? And they were wondering, this is his friend. So he said, Today, I lost my daughter, but she left a light, a nur, that still remains in my heart right now. And then later on afterwards, he continued, he always went to the masjid and he was a changed person. Always close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always kept keeping up to us with his prayers and so forth. This light though, remained in his heart and he was a changed person from that time on. Change. This is a word that we always promise ourselves every day, every month, Every year, every Ramadan, we will say, you know, we'll be a changed person. We will change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us many opportunities to change. He gives us the Jum'ah, the five daily prayers. as al khams And then Jum'ah ila Jum'ah. From Jum'ah to Jum'ah. Wa Ramadan ila Ramadan. Mukaffiratun lima baynahunna. Iza jtuni batil kabair. These are expiations for you if you avoid the major sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us or tells us an, or, to pray so that we can change and so that we ourselves change within ourselves and have the opportunity to also change the community. And this is what Ramadan was for, for us. And if we are changed after Ramadan, then this is also a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted our deeds afterwards. But if we are the same, or we turn back, we turn back to the old, our old self, then this is also a bad sign that maybe Allah subhanahu wa did not accept our deeds. So, during the times right now that we are in, our community, the Muslim Ummah, is in need of change. And I'm not talking about change that's mentioned in McCain's political slogans or Obama's political slogans. No. The Ummah itself, the Muslims, we ourselves, we have to change. But where do we start? Where do we start with this change? Let's learn from some of the teachings of the Prophet wasallam. When he first came to Medina. What were his first words? Because these words will be the foundation of a stronger community. These words will be the foundation of a stronger ummah. These words will be a stronger foundation, a foundation for the stronger, a stronger family. And so when the Prophet wasallam, when he arrived in Medina, from Mecca, the turning point in Islam. This is the time in which before the Muslims were oppressed. Now this is the turning point, the time of change where the Muslims will have the upper hand from, from now on. They will be strong and there will be an established Muslim state. But how, what did the Prophet ﷺ tell the companions? When he arrived, he said, Ayyuhal Nas, O people, O oh, people, he called out all the people 
in Medina because there are a lot of the Muslims in Medina and he told them he said oh people first thing that you do he said help each other start feeding each other start feeding arham and join relations uh, he said first of all he said afshu salam give the salams and then help the needy and then the Prophet sallallahu said وَسِلِ arham and enjoy relations وَصَلُّوا بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّاسُ النَّيَامِ and pray at night time when the people are sleeping تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ بِسَلَامِ the first thing that you do the first sunnah that has been forgotten I mean one of the sunnahs that have been forgotten in our times right now is spreading the salams spreading the salams most people they look at the salams as something that's very insignificant but this is the beginning of your path to paradise to give salams because the Prophet ﷺ, he said in another hadith which is authentic he mentioned clearly to us he said لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا you will not enter paradise until you believe ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا and you will not believe until you love each other أفلا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحاببتم أفشوا السلام would you like me to show you something that if you were to go forward and do it you will love each other spread the salams and amongst the signs of the day of judgment is that people will leave this sunnah you might say, well people are still giving salams but you know what? the Prophet said, amongst the signs of the day of judgment ayyukuna salam alil ma'rifah that when a person gives salams it's only because he needs something he wants to know something for example somebody comes into the masjid and he says, brother assalamu alaikum brother do you know where the closest halal restaurant is? assalamu alaikum brother did you see the key that was left here? did you see anybody take it? Would he have given salams if he didn't need to know anything? He wouldn't. We don't give salams to each other and we only give salams to the people who are close to us that we know. When we meet Muslims, we don't give salams. It's only for information for something that we need. And then afterwards, after you give salams, right, the Prophet ﷺ said, you will not enter Jannah until you believe. You will not believe until you love each other. Would you like me to show you something to do, that if you were to do it, you would love each other? Give the salams. So the second is that we have to love each other. We have to work with each other. And the fundamentals of our belief, part of our iman, is loving our brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith that I'm sure all of us have heard before. And all of us we know. But do we practice it? And what's that hadith? لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. You will not believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Most people think this is a high level to achieve. This is mashallah. You know, if somebody can achieve this particular, that's like the epitome of iman. No, you know what? Al Imam Al Nawawi, rahimahullah. He said, this is the minimum requirement for every Muslim. This is the minimum requirement. لا يؤمن أحدكم None of you truly believes. This is minimum requirement. You have to love for your brother what you love for yourself. Then what's the praiseworthy position? The praiseworthy position is that you love for your brother more than what you even love for yourself. It's preference. Preferring your brother over your own self. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ so, عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا That's the praiseworthy position. And so as Muslims, we ourselves, in order to establish a strong community, we have to start working together. We have to start with the little things. In loving each other. 
So how do we build this love amongst the community? How do we build this love among, in our family members? How do we do it? The first thing, one of the, one of the ways is by giving each other gifts. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Tahadu, tahabu. As Muslims, you know with the holiday seasons coming up in America, right? It's, the, it's a time of giving and so forth. But you know, that's the most stressful time to the Americans, the people in America, the non-Muslims, those who celebrate Christmas and so forth. This is you, if you ask them, what is the most stressful time of the year? They will tell you, it's the holiday seasons. Why is it so stressful when they should be happy? It's a time of joy and happiness. Why? Because it's no the gifts and so forth, shouldn't they make each other, shouldn't they make them love each other? Shouldn't it help them to bring, bring, them, each, bring, each other, bring them closer to each other? Why is it when you personally ask anyone, most of them will say, you know, that's, very, that's a very stressful time. Just ask. So is it stressful for you when in the holiday season? Yeah, they'll say, yes it is. It's a very stressful time for us. Why is it? Why? As Muslims, some Muslims also, you know, during like their Eid, Eid and so forth, we make that as a day or a time in which we give gifts to our parents, give gifts to our friends and family members and so forth. But you know, as Muslims, there's no specific time to give gifts. The Prophet ﷺ generalized that he opened it up whenever you give gifts and the gifts that have the most meaning are the gifts that you give when the other person is not expecting. If he is expecting it, then it isn't a surprise and it doesn't build that love. So Eid isn't a time to give gifts. As Muslims, you give gifts all the time. But if you're expecting it, like for example, the holiday seasons we have right now, people are expecting it. So they might, you know, they have to give somebody else too. So if they give, so, if they receive something that is less than their expectations, they say, you know what? I spent more money for this guy. Why did I get, just get this? This little thing. I, I spent even more for the other person. So they are not happy, even though that gift must be might be very valuable. It might be very, very expensive. But it doesn't have that effect. But what if you never, you're not expecting anything and a brother comes to you. He says, brother, I have here a box of candy or a watch or anything or just something very small, insign very, insign very small, but he gives it to you as a gift. Are you happy? Say, MashaAllah, JazakAllah khair, brother. The next thing, next thing you know, immediately, it helps you build this bond already. So the, the, the Prophet ﷺ was approached by the companions all the time. They would come with, him, with, with gifts for him. And the companions would give gifts to each other also to build this love. And they didn't give like the, the little things. You know, they didn't give like the little things. They gave the things that they love. Because this is also a part of Iman. To give, to help the needy and to help others. And you give the things that you love, that you want. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, لَن تُنفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You shall never attain piety until you spend from that which you love. Until you spend from that which you love. And this is how their companions were. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Every time he would come across this ayah, he would think, what is it that he loves the most? And he would think, and these are like valuable things that he would have. Would be land, would be, might be, it might be something that he really wanted, that he didn't have for a long time, then he got it. And he would think, he would come across, and he finished the Qur'an every three days. So he would give. Every time he would come across his life, every three days he would think, what's the most valuable thing, what's the most beloved thing to me? And he would give that thing to, a, to the poor or to whoever was need, more needy. This is preference. We have to build this love amongst the Muslims, amongst ourselves. And then, when we start up a community, when we start, we want projects like schools, pro, like da'wah projects, social projects and so forth, 
then you, once you build this love, it's easier for us to work with each other. And once otherwise, you, if you always have enmity, this person is this, this person is that, as soon as you start off a committee, a brother comes up, brother, you know what, I put $3,000 into this project with my own money. I'm not even part of the board. Alright? I'm not part of the board. What's wrong? So you have, sometimes it's these discussions. But if we had this love amongst ourselves, and not, not this enmity and hatred and jealousy and so forth, in the Muslim community, then it's much easier for us to work with. And it starts off with what? With just giving salams to somebody you don't even know. If you give, for example, you walk by and you don't know this brother. Salaamu alaikum brother, and you give salams. And you don't give just little heartwarming salams. Yeah, you don't just give a little salam, just give yeah, salam alaikum brother. As if you knew him for like the last 20 years. He'll be, what will happen to that brother? That brother will probably be surprised, right? Wow, but do I know this? He's probably thinking, right? Do I know this brother? Maybe I met him somewhere before, right? But then, if you did that, the next time you see him at Walmart or wherever you're shopping, <laughs> not, uh, you know, wherever you're, like the supermarket and so forth, you would immediately, that brother, that connection that you made because of that salam, you see him in the streets or whatever, brother, salamu alaikum brother. It's like you guys know each other for the last 20 years, for real. Isn't that the case? So that's why it starts with that, by just giving these just little salams. I remember when I was in, in Vietnam, I used to, uh, I tried to revive giving of salams the way that it should be. You give salams when you leave, when you come in, when you leave. And so I would walk by a Muslim brother, salamu alaikum brother. Immediately he would stop. He would say, Yes, do you need something? I said, No, I just want to give salam, brother. I would go again. Walk well, by then, Muslim. Salamu alaikum, brother. Yes, brother, do you need anything? He would say, Wa alaikum salam. Yes, brother, is there anything I can do for you? Do you need anything? I said, No, no, I just want to give salams. That's all. Every time I would walk by in the streets, somebody, I'd give salam to somebody, they would stop and ask me because, I'm, you, first of all, you don't just give a regular salam, give a warm, warm salams. Give it with any, from your heart. You know, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put a smile on your face and give salams to the brothers. And give salams to each other and shake their hands. And the, 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 this, this is what the companions did. When they went by something, if they're, whether a tree or, or a pole or a wall or anything, came between them, they would immediately give salams again. If somebody did this, you'd probably think they're crazy. Right now, I, well, you know, and so we have to start practicing this, even in our family members. You know, for example, let me give you an example. If you come by, you get into a car, your wife goes to the other side of the car, you come this side of the car. Once you sit down, give salams to her. The car separated you two, right? When you went in, apply this sunnah right there. Your mother, your father, whoever's on the other side, salamu alaikum, brother. Give salams to your brother, or your sister, or your wife, and so forth. Put this into application and you'll see it does wonders. And this is just the beginning. And then we have to start loving each other and giving each other. Of course, gifts. And don't think that you have to spend like $100, $200, $300. No. Every time, be consistent. Every time you go to the store, next time you want to buy something, next time you go to the store, think of somebody. Think of somebody. I don't care who it is, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your grandfather, grandmother, buy them something. When you buy something for yourself, buy something for them also. Next time, think of your best friend, buy something for them. Next time, it might be the imam. Next time, your father, your mother. Are they expecting anything? It's not Eid, right? It's not Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr. It's not their birthday or anything like that, right? <laughs> Not that we should be celebrating birthdays or anything like that, but for no particular reason. Just be consistent with it and you will see that within your circle, your family, the love amongst yourselves will build. It will become stronger even within your family. And that's where we start off. And then the community, of course, you start thinking 
of the other Muslim brothers who are in need. That's why when you give zakat, you have to look for the it's sunnah to go yourself, to go and give yourself. So you can see the conditions of the Muslims. You don't want to send it here and there. You want to look at the, your community first. Every, around the community, there are people who are needy. Don't give me the, you know, this, this and that about, you know, what people here don't need any, there, there, there are no needy people and so forth. No, it's your responsibility. When you give sadaqah, zakat and so forth, go look at the people around your area. Inshallah brothers, could you please move up a little bit? Because I think uh, if you have any space of the brothers in the back, inshallah, can have time. So move up a little bit, inshallah. So, and that's why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal, when he sent him to, when he sent him to Yemen, what did he tell them? He said, you're coming to a people, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوْلُ مَا تَلْعُوهُمِ إِلَيْهِ Let the first thing you call them to, you're coming to, the, to a, a people of the book. I mean, you're, you're coming to the, uh, the people of the book, Christians and the Jews. And so, let the first thing you call them to is La ilaha illallah. And then tell them that it's obligatory upon them to pray the five daily prayers. And then tell them to give the zakat. تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ Take, it, take that from their rich and return it to fuqara, their poor. The, po the poor people amongst them. Because if you keep on sending your zakat out here and there, outside to the other places, and you forget the people in the area, in your area, you know, of course we should always be thinking the Muslims no matter where they are. You can, get, you can send your sadaqah anywhere. But specifically the zakat, take care of the area, the community, because that's the person who you see in the, when you go to the masjid. These are the people in your community. Strengthen your community, start from the inside out, your family, your community and so forth. And start the change from within. And then go out, further and further around, uh, out the circle. And so, as Muslims, we should have mercy upon all. And build this love amongst us, because the love for the sake of Allah, is the strongest love of all. إِنَّ أَوْثَقُ الْعُورَ الْإِيمَانَ الْحُبُّ فِي اللَّهِ وَالْبُغْضُ فِي اللَّهِ The strongest bond of Iman, not of Iman, bond of Iman, is the bond which is the love for Allah's sake, and disliking for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you, we love for the sake of Allah. And the love for the sake of Allah, there's nothing like it. Loving for the sake of Allah, and giving for the sake of Allah, and helping for the sake of Allah, this is the strongest thing. Even with your family members, even with your wife, you should love her. Of course, you have this natural love, but that love for Allah should be the strongest. And that's what will keep your relationship stronger than anything else, is when you love for the sake of Allah. Why is this the case? Why is that love for the sake of Allah the strongest? Because you're not expecting anything back. You're only hoping from Allah. So when you are kind to your wife, your spouse, your, or your wife or your husband, and you're kind to them, you are kind to them, and you're treating them nicely for the sake of Allah. And so if you don't receive that back, you're not even expecting it to start with. So you will continually be kind to them, even if you don't get the same treatment from them. But if you do get, you know, you get that kindness from them, and you're not expecting it, then you appreciate it even more. Then you appreciate it even more. And so do things for the sake of Allah. Love your brothers and sisters, and love your aunts and uncles, your family members and so forth. Love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what also keeps us strong, keeps the community strong. And as Muslims, this is how the society in Medina, when they came together, it was built on La ilaha illallah. It was built upon loving for the sake of Allah, worshipping Allah alone 
And everybody was connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Afshah salam. وَأَطْعِمَ الطَّعَامِ Help the needy, feed the, feed the poor. وَصِلِ الْأَرْحَامِ And enjoy relations. We should always try to enjoy relations with us, you know, all the time. With our family members. That's why the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَلَّمُ مِنْ أَنْسَابِكُمْ مَا تَصِلُ بِهِ أَرْحَامَكُمْ Learn your lineage, your relatives, so you can enjoy this relationship. You learn who, who your, your relatives are, so you can enjoy relations. Even if they're your second cousin, third cousin, these are acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And that will strengthen the community and strengthen the family. And once that's strong, then your iman will go up because it's easier to go to the masjid. Because when you have problems in the masjid, you have people say, Brother, I don't want to see, I don't want to go to the masjid. I don't want to see the brother's face in the Like every time I see the brother's face, it's like, ah. So this causes you to stay away from the community and so forth. So start building this. And instead of blaming other people when things go wrong, when this thing happens, put the responsibility on your shoulders. That why, if, what is it? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's the sins that you are committing. Maybe because you're not participating. So if things go around you, don't blame anyone except yourself. We blame the times that we are living in. But there's nothing wrong with the times we are living in. The only thing that's wrong is us. And so, we ourselves, we have to change. When you see things going around, then you change. Change all the things as much as you can. And don't think that it, won't, it can't happen. It starts off with the core, the Muslim communities working together. And if we can change something about it, then we should change something for the better and make something more Islamic and so forth. Then we should do such, we should do such things. Like for example, you have right now, what is it, Proposition 8? With the marriage and so forth. If there's a proposition, and this proposition is calling for something that Islamically, it's part of it's part of this uh, part of Islam. Like for example, you have like you might have some propositions like you know gambling, for example, in other places. You know, you know they want to legalize gambling in certain cities and so forth. It's okay for Muslims in order to keep this away because gambling is, of course, we know what it is in Islam. We know it's prohibited, and so if we participate, we can change that. Then we ourselves should put forward, forward, and we should change that. And also, as I mentioned. We should try to do all that we can to change the community and also change the perception of the, Muslim, of the non-Muslims towards the Muslims also. We should get involved in helping Muslims and non-Muslims when it comes to social things. And this is part of our iman, part of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned the hadith, inshaAllah, I'll end the first khutbah with this hadith, about a prostitute. She came to a well. She was very thirsty, so she entered the well, she went down into the well, and she drank until she was quenched. When she came back out, she looked outside and she saw that there was a dog there. That dog had been, uh, the dog was licking the wet ground around the well. And so she said, Ya Allah, and you see, she said, yeah, well, this, is, this dog is just as thirsty as I was before I went to drink. So she went down into the well again and filled up her hoof or leather socks with water and she fed this dog. And because of this action, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah forgave her all her sins. In another narration of Sahih Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entered paradise. Subhanallah. A prostitute enters paradise because of giving water to a dog. What if this person was a human? What if this person was a Muslim? What if this person was a relative of yours and was really in need? That's why Shaykh uh, uh, Ibn, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah, he said, he mentioned his commentary on this, he said this is proof that it is recommended, you know, not, only, not for Muslims, not only to be kind to animals, but of course, with, even with non-Muslims, it's awla, I mean, bab al-awla, I mean, it's even more worthy. And so that's why, we should also 
showed us that Islam, as the Prophet said, Irhamu man fil ardi, irhamukum man fil sama. Have mercy upon those on earth, and the one who is in the heavens will have mercy upon you. And so we should start the change by loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and working together. And it starts with some of these little things that we can do. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفره لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والعدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون. So I mentioned the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said وأطعم الطعام help each other and then in the end he said وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام and pray at night time while the people are asleep تدخل الجنة بالسلام. The thing also that in order for us to build a stronger community, we have to strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is by standing up at night time, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during Salat al-Tahajjud. And be consistent, consistent with this. Even if it's just two rak'ahs before, before, fajr, before the prayer, fajr time comes in. Wake up before fajr time. And if it's just try to, to, try to be consistent with it, at least just two rak'ahs. If you can do more, alhamdulillah, but at least two rak'ahs. To strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when everyone is asleep. You communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends down to the lower heavens and He asks, Is there anyone there who asks forgiveness for me, from me that I, so that I, will, I can forgive him? Is there anybody that wants anything so that I can give him? And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this every single day, the last third of the night. And we have to strengthen, to strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cleanse our hearts and by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthen this inshallah and then inshallah our community will be stronger in building this love amongst ourselves and then of course it starts as I mentioned with just these little things that I've just given and there's a lot more things that we can do to strengthen uh, ourselves so I want you next time when you go to the market when you see another brother just give salams and you don't know him but just give him a warm salams and do that as much as you can because every time you do so, you're getting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it for the sake of Allah. Then when you go to the store next time, when you get in the store, buy something. Even if it's just a piece of chocolate. If your brother is not expecting it, he's going to be very happy, even if it's just a Hershey's bar. It's going to cost you 55 cents, 59 cents, 60 cents. But you know, he'll still be happy. You won't break the bank doing it. But you build love amongst yourselves. And just be consistent with that also. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليمه وأقيموا الصلاة